Okay everybody, welcome once again to rockfreakinsolid.com. This week we're going to be working on woodwinds. Now, I got a lot of information to tell you. I got to really talk fast because I really want to make this one into one video and I only got 10 minutes on most video platforms here, okay? <clears throat> now, we're going to go into a little back to basics info first. But today we're going to be talking about the mathematical formula for figuring out the precise measurement of a, any given note's wavelength. And this is very important if you want to do any precise tuning for your instruments. Precise, proper tuning is key. No pun intended. All right. Um, before we get into the formula, let's discuss a little bit about the speed of sound. Now, the speed of sound is not necessarily constant, okay? It depends on the media it's traveling through, the matter that it goes through, okay? S sound travels faster through a block of stone than it does through air. Sound travels faster through water than it does through air. Through water is slower than it does through stone. It all depends on the matter and how dense or how rarefied it is, okay? Same thing with air. Air can be more dense and more rarefied. It, it's more dense at sea level or even below sea level like at Death Valley than it does where the air is thinner at a mountain top. If you're like playing a note and you lift a finger and you sound A, the note A at sea level, maybe it's F or G at a mountain top. And for that reason, we have to like figure a, a common ground. Those of us who make musical instruments, we decide that they should play in tune at sea level. Another thing that affects the density of air is temperature, okay? So we figure a, an average temperature of about 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius, okay? So at an average temperature and an average altitude, sea level, we figure out the speed of sound in inches or centimeters, how far it travels in one second, okay? Now let's talk about hertz frequencies, okay? Uh, here's where you go into my little crazy drawing here. I don't draw very well when I'm drawing on the fly. This is supposed to be a speaker, okay? It's a little smudge. And this is supposed to be somebody's ear. It looks a little weird, okay? And these little dots are like molecules of air, okay? Now, sound travels, as we know, in waves, which are like little pushes of air, kind of like when a speaker is running and it does this. It's sending the waves out, little pushes against the air right next to it, okay? Now, air is free-flowing and stuff, but the, the general air, okay, pretty much stays here. It's the wave that moves through the matter that's moving. That's the important thing that we're focusing on here. So, when this speaker pushes and it's sending out waves of sound, it pushes against this molecule, which pushes against the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the push gets sent along the molecules. They pretty much generally stay put, for, for the most part, for our purpose of visible illustration here. It's the, the push that moves along. It's like, uh, you can pretty much picture these as a bunch of mini micro dudes slam dancing in place along a linear mosh pit. <laughs> okay? Um, if that makes things easier. Now, um, so the, the speaker pushes one wave, and that push gets carried along from passed along from molecule to molecule and then the speaker pushes another wave and then the speaker pushes another wave and then you have a bunch of waves of sound going through the air. You see what I'm saying here? So this, the, the wave of sound goes through air like this. This is a fixed distance we're going to imagine here, okay? And the distance of time is a second, okay? Now, a high note will have a bunch more pushes into the air, a higher frequency. It's more frequent, the kicks through the air, okay? So there'd be like a bunch of these waves for a high note. For a very low bass note, it might be just a few. Do you see what I'm saying here? Okay. Now, back to the uh, temperature and altitude. We need to figure out the speed of sound at an average temperature at sea level how far in linear distance it travels in one second, okay? We've got two numbers here. This here is, um, oh God, I look horrible in the middle of the night, don't I? Anyway, this, this, is, <laughs> this is centimeters and this is inches, okay? I can't focus on aesthetics of myself. I have to focus on the education, okay? Um, in one second, 
at an average temperature at sea level, sound travels 34,357.31 centimeters in one second, that linear space of distance. In inches, sound travels in one second at sea level at an average temperature 13,526.5 inches per second, that amount of space. It's the same amount of space measured in different units, okay? Now, um, just, just for speed of getting this video out and for ease of explanation, I'm just going to use inches from now on, okay? Um, to figure out how many hertz, named after the guy who figured this all out, hertz is how many, how many punches, how many beats, how many kicks along the line of molecules, how many hertz. In, 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 a, in a given second, in a given space of space and time. Uh, is, it depends on what note it is. If it's a high note, again, the frequency is going to be much higher. If it's a low note, it's going to be a slower frequency, a less amount of kicks per packet of space, okay? Now, um, in, let's, let's, let's use a... All right, for example, the note A, okay? In the scientific scale, the note we know as A is 440 hertz per second, 440 kicks through the air. So in order to find out the, the linear measurement of a wavelength of any given note, let's say A, okay, we take the hertz frequency and we take these the, the number for the speed of sound, speed of sound in inches, I'm just going to use inches now, we take this um, linear distance and divide this number by the hertz frequency number, 440 in our example. So we divide this by 440 and we'll get the length of the wavelength of 440A, okay? If we divide this by 440, we get 30.74 inches. It's about like 30 and 3 quarter inches, okay? There are 440 30 and 3 quarter inch segments in 13,526.5 inches of space. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay, so the wavelength of A in this case is 30 and 3 quarter inches. Okay, now this is very important to figure out the precise tuning for instruments, not just woodwinds, but pretty much any instrument that uses or utilizes a, a, an enclosed column of air to determine the notes. Okay, not just woodwinds. So let's say like uh, like next week's project. It's going to be the set of chromatic tubular drums. It's going to be different lengths of tubes for different notes of the drums. Those use enclosed air columns as well to determine the notes, not just woodwinds. Okay, so um, um, you got it right. It's just speed of sound in inches or centimeters, divided by the divided by the hertz frequency number of the note. If you want to look at the hertz frequency numbers for any note on the blog, rockfreakinsolid.com, there is a hertz frequency reference page. There will be a link to it in today's post on the blog. Come visit the blog. Yeah, there will be a link to it in the uh, video description too. But there's a lot more information than just this in this uh, video in the blog post. Come over to the blog and see today's post. There will be a link to that in the video description as well, okay? Uh, because um, there's different types of flutes, and they, there's a little bit more math to be involved here. For instance, um, this week will be the side-blown transverse flute. You know, you blow across the side. That's considered an open-ended flute on one end. You get the closed end, you're blowing across the end, the, the, the embouchure here, you've got the finger holes closed, and this is the open end. An open-ended flute like that needs only to be a half a wavelength long to blow the fundamental or root note, the lowest possible playing note with all finger holes closed. So therefore, if you want the fundamental note of a transverse flute to be 440A, it only needs to be a half wavelength long or 15 and 3 eighths inches long. Okay? You got that? This is also the same um, mathematical formula to use to figure out where the finger holes are. What note is this? Use that formula. What note is this one? That one. That's how you figure out where the holes go. Okay? There's a little bit more math to figure out. Some other things that factor in, like how wide the bore diameter is. Again, more information in the post. Come visit, okay? Um, that's it for today, okay? I hope I kept this under 10 minutes. Um, Wednesday we'll talk about the different materials we can use. Friday is the project. Come on by. Thanks for stopping by today. See ya.